What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny. We are back with another This Week in Destiny, giving you all the heads up on everything that you can expect for the up and coming week. So if you want to find out more about the return of Iron Banner, all the latest featured raid and dungeons, the up-to-date Dares of Eternity loot, all the weekly rituals, and more importantly what Tess has available for Bright Dust this week, then be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below, and remember to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. Just over 60% of the viewers on the channel aren't currently subscribed, so be sure to hit that red button and ring that bell to make sure you don't miss an update. But without further delay guys, let's jump into the video. Now this week's episode is brought to us by our official channel partner, that is Apex Gaming PCs. If you're in the market for a brand new gaming PC or you're looking to build your own, be sure to check them out. Not only do we have our own range of Java PCs, you can further customise these to your exact requirements, ensuring you get more bang for your buck when building your absolutely top tier rig. And further still, if you use code Java at checkout, you can save up to $250 off. So be sure to check them out and I'll leave all their links and details down in the video description below. Another week and another this week in Destiny and this week sees the return of Iron Banner to Destiny 2 and with that the return of Rift as the exclusive Iron Banner game mode. Now this is scheduled to be the last Iron Banner of Season 17, so if you're still working on that Iron Lord title and seal, then this will be another opportunity to get those triumphs done to finally get your hands on it. Now moving over to the Vow of the Disciple Raid, and we have a new raid challenge for the up and coming week. This week's challenge is called Swift Destruction, and in order to complete this challenge you have to kill all the champions at the same time, roughly within a few seconds of each other on all rounds throughout the fight. Now if you are still working your way through these challenges, we made a video right here on the channel showing you how to complete them all so if you need an extra helping hand be sure to check that video out and i'll leave the link to that down in the video description below now moving on to the featured raid and dungeon for the up and coming week this week sees us return to the vault of glass now the vault of glass returned in season of the splicer and by defeating the final boss you'll also grant yourself an additional pinnacle reward it's also an excellent chance to finally get your hands on the vex class. as whenever the raids are featured then the raid exotics are farmable once again we made a video covering this the last time vault of glass was in rotation so good luck on your hunt if you're still chasing down the vex mythoclast now as for the featured dungeon the grasp of avarice returns now the grasp was introduced in the 30th anniversary pack and not only does it have its own exclusive armor it is also the main source for the galahorn exotic rocket launcher and much like the vault of glass if you can defeat the final boss once again you'll get yourself an additional pinnacle reward so if you still find yourself on the power grind then completing the Vault of Glass and the Grasp of Avarice this week will certainly go a long way to aiding you on your power grind. Now next up we're going to look at the Dares of Eternity, this 30th anniversary pack activity as we have new armor and weapons to chase. Now as for the armor this week we have the Braytech suit set way back from the Warmind era so if you didn't partake in Destiny or missed out on it back then then this will be another opportunity to get your hands on it. The same can be said for the Lost Pacific suit set which is the other armor set available this week which is the old armor set from Titan back in Destiny 2 Vanilla. Now these armor sets have a chance to drop during the course of the activity activity or upon activity completion itself so it's an excellent opportunity to fill out that transmog collection but if you're chasing weapons and not armor this week then we have a massive range of weapons from season of arrivals this includes the first in last out shotgun the lonesome sidearm the gnawing hunger the night watch scout rifle the made ingredient fusion rifle the ikelos smg the long shadow sniper the still sibyl sword the toil and trouble the last perdition pulse the wishbringer shotgun the grenade launcher that none of us use, the last dance and also the Ikelos sniper rifle. Now some of these weapons are still absolutely top tier and are still well worth chasing down if you don't have god rolls on them and much like the armor these have a chance to drop during the course of the activity or when you complete the activity itself. Now moving on to the weekly rituals, we have a new mission via the Witch Queen campaign and this week's up and coming mission is the Communion. Now by completing this as the featured mission, this is also an excellent source of pinnacle loot if you're still on the power grind, but also an amazing source of ascendant alloy if you need the end game upgrade material for crafting weapons. So if you find yourself needing either of those, be sure to jump into the Communion to get that challenge done. Now next up we're going to move on to the Nightfall for the up and coming week and this week sees us return to the Insight Terminal over on Nessus and the Insight Terminus is seen sometimes as the more trickier Nightfall due to the three plates you need to capture especially on Grandmaster but if you can absolutely nail it then you'll be able to get your hands on the Nightfall exclusive weapon 
which for the up and coming week is the DFA hand cannon. Now the normal version of this weapon will drop on pretty much all versions of the Nightfall with the exception of Grandmaster which will drop the Adept version of this weapon. So whether you're looking to farm out the God Roll for this amazing hand cannon or you're just looking to complete your GMs to get your hands on the Conqueror Seal then make sure to jump into the Inside Terminus to get your hands on them. Now next up we're going to move on to the Crucible Rotator and the playlist for the up and coming week is Team Scorched. So if you find yourself getting burnt out on Iron Banner or you're just not a big fan of Rift in general then you can mix up your Crucible time by jumping into Team Scorched this week. To go alongside that though we also have Crucible Labs with Zone Control returning and to go alongside those and the return of Iron Banner we also see bonus Crucible ranks all week long. This week is a great week to jump into the Crucible so whether you're looking to just chill out with some friends or jump in and grind some Iron Banner all of these modes will grant additional Crucible ranks for you. Now next up we're going to move on to seasonal challenges and there are just six seasonal challenges for week eight of season of the haunted the first one's called shocking forgiveness and here you need to complete sever forgiveness whilst using only an arc subclass and arc kinetic and stasis weapons that's alongside vestiges of dread three so throughout season of the haunted you need to collect vestiges of dread and pick up material nodes on the derelict leviathan alongside that we have umbral focusing three and here you need to focus equipment at the crown of sorrow throughout the course of the season next up we have pinnacle and here you need to reach the power level of 1570 by earning pinnacle rewards next up we have wide point calibration and here you need to calibrate trace rifles and shotguns and bonus progress is granted for rapidly defeating targets and defeating guardians and the final challenge for this week is called gambit ornament and here you need to acquire the gambit ornament for the chain of command machine gun now remember guys all these challenges grant excellent sources of xp but also bright dust too and it's with that in mind it's time to bring us on to one of the most important parts of the week and that's what Tess has available for bright dust in week eight of season of the haunted now over in the featured bright dust shelf we have a exotic ship called swift persistence this is a brand new one that was introduced this season it has been available for silver as well setting people back 800 silver that you can pick up this week for just 2000 bright dust alongside that we have exotic armor ornaments and these will vary depending on which class of guardian you visit Tess with. For you hunters you have an ornament for your lucky pants called fortunate beast. For you titans you have an ornament for your no backup plans called piezoelectric strategum and for you warlocks you have an ornament for your necrotic grips called replicate exploit. Now these have all been available for 600 silver but you can pick all of these up this week and each one will set you back 1500 bright dust. That's alongside a brand new ghost projection called no entry. Once again this has been available for 200 silver this season but can be picked up this week for 1500 bright dust instead and the shader for this week is called the aposmatism now this was introduced back in season of the splicer so if you missed out on it back then and you like the color theme that you see here on my warlock then you can pick this up this week for 300 bright dust now over in the main bright dust store we have a new exotic emote called flaming hula hoop now this has been available as part of an emote set or you've been able to pick it up individually for a thousand silver but if you want to pick it up this week this will set you back 3250 bright dust that's alongside a legendary emote called showstopper dance back from season of the chosen now this emote is from the mic drop music video so if you fancy picking it up this will set you back 700 bright dust this week that's alongside the long haul exotic ghost shell this is also back from the season of the splicer so if you missed out on it back then this will set you back 2850 bright dust this week next up we have universal armor ornaments and these are for the eververse legendary set from season of the haunted the hunters you have the sun apex mask for your warlock you have the dawn singer hood and for your titan you have the radiant breaker helm so if you're looking to complete this entire set for bright dust then each one of these helmets will set you back 1200 bright dust this week alongside those we also have a legendary weapon ornament for the callous mini tool and this is called defenseless to be armed now this is a much sought after ornament so if you missed out on it way back in season of opulence this will set you back 700 bright dust this week and the penultimate item on offer is the eremis ghost projection back from season of the hunt so if you missed out on it back then this will set you back 1500 bright dust this week and the final item on offer is an exotic weapon ornament for the arbalist and this is called electromagnetic execution this is a brand new ornament this season so if you didn't want to spend 700 silver on it this will set you back just 1250 bright dust this week 
So there we have it guys, a good look on everything that you can expect from this week in Destiny. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.